What's up, y'all? Whoa. Let's not drop the phone. Uh, I'm in the backyard. Kind of downstairs on uh, our little downstairs patio. Before I get into anything else, let's take a look at these beers. Whoop. And this is my makeshift. Uh, that's not comforting. So we um, we have chairs, but for whatever reason, I just decided I'm gonna sit on this um, kid's picnic table, which almost just <laughs> broke underneath me. Um, let's look at these beers. So I've actually been sitting for a minute, so the head is not quite as beautiful as it was a few minutes ago. Um, these are the two beers that are currently on tap right now. So we've got that one. I'm not one at all. So I've got two beautiful beers, um, especially depending on your um, view on beauty when it comes to the haze. So this is not a, this is not an IPA. And this lovely number right here. Um, these are actually two different saisons. If you follow my Instagram on uh, not on Sundays brewing. On Instagram you've probably seen a picture or two of these um, this here is a they're both Saison ish beers so this is a Saison that uh, I put on um, Scuppernog and Muscadine grapes and then this one is a green strawberry and Earl Grey tea Saison um, so let's jump into these and let's talk about them. We'll do this one first. So this is probably the third year of doing a variation on this beer. So you know me, I love Saison. Um, whether it be super simple, whether it be sour, whether it be funky, whether it be, um, you know, whatever. So like I said, this is probably the third year and it's actually really starting to actually kind of clear. I love it. So this one takes a little while to clear, but it will eventually. Um, so it's both of these were off the same batch. We're off the same mash. Really simple grain bill. And uh, am I right, guys, that there's not much sexier than when your wife helps you make a beer? Um, and my wife... Uh, helps me on brew day with this she made it through about midway through the boil and then it was all me but she helped me crush the grains she helped me mash in she helped me uh, uh, mash out lauder um, all that kind of stuff sparge so it was awesome um, but the the grist on for both of these these beers is really super simple it's um, it's just Pilsner and white wheat that's it it is very simple. I love keeping my Saison simple, easy. But I don't know how uh, widespread uh, Scuppernog and Muscadine grapes are. I know it is a southern thing, but I don't know how um, far-reaching they are. Um, a lot of times you'll find them growing wild, but people actually do grow them. They get a bad perception in the South, at least, because a lot of times when you hear them referred to, it's that people are making them into like muscadine wine. So a muscadine is a red, um, kind of wild Southern grape. And then the scuppernog is the white grape version of that muscadine. So a scuppernog is a muscadine, but it is a white muscadine. Um, so this was aged on both. I've got some friends who uh, I'm very fortunate that their family actually grows them, but they are really, really sweet. They're extremely sweet grapes, and they're and they're really large. They're really large sweet grapes. So most of the time you hear them referenced in the South, um, they're talking about Muscadine wine, which is typically almost sickly sweet. I've had a couple that are dry, that are pretty tasty, but most of the time you don't hear people talk about muscadines in, in a good light. They talk about them being really sweet and just overpowering, 
they, they are a very powerful flavored grape. But what I found is that in this Saison that I do at least once a year, typically in the spring, this is actually the second version that I've done this year of this beer, that if you do it in a lower amount with a, like a Saison and something really dry, so this beer got down to like 10.06 or 10.05, um, it really does a nice balance and brings kind of a green, grapey, almost um, uh, like a white wine kind of vinous character to it. And it's, it's extremely nice. I really, really enjoy it. Um, that's why I've done it, at, you know, at least once a year. It really is delicious. Um, it brings a, just a hint of tartness, a little bit of earthiness to it because the grapes in general, I throw them in there. If they got stems, I throw the grapes, with this, the stems in there. Um, they have pretty big seeds inside the grapes as well. So I think it brings kind of a little bit of like a tannic, um, some, you know, tannin structure to it all. I'm getting attacked by flies. Um, so I really, really enjoy this beer. Pilsner, white wheat, nothing sexy. And then um, I used uh, Omega's Saisenstein Monster for this. I hope you can't hear that dog in the background. He's driving me crazy. He's inside the uh, basement. Um, so this was Saison Stein Monster. Is that what it is from Omega? It, it's an incredible, incredible yeast strain, and I really enjoy it. So there's that. And it ended at a... Uh, it was about six and a half percent alcohol it was a little bit higher than I actually wanted because it did dry out so dry it fermented out so dry um, which I did want so I don't know why it necessarily surprised me that it went to um, six and a half seven percent alcohol and then let's talk about this other beauty right here so like I said same grist same mash look at the lacing on that glass and the nuts love it so I treat this one a, a little bit differently but not a lot um, what I actually do and what I've come to do a couple different times lately is um, if I want a little bit more brightness a little bit more acidity a little bit more um, uh, I don't even know what the right term is um, I've actually started to dose just a tiny bit of lactic acid after fermentation is finished. So if I taste it and it's not quite as bright as I as I really want, um, instead of messing with water chemistry on the front end, which I could do, um, sometimes I'll add a little bit of lactic acid on the back end and it brightens it up a little bit without doing any kind of um, uh, kettle sour type from uh, process so what I do at the end with this one and this is the second iteration that I've done I did one last year is I do I add a little bit of lactic acid to um, the beer at after fermentation it brings just a hint of tartness to it but then I age this thing on a ton of green strawberries so there's a strawberry field that's uh, close to my house And, um, and so it's like one of those pick your own like strawberry fields. And this is the only way that I've been able to find green strawberries. So if you have any um, tips or tricks of how to find green strawberries where I can actually just buy them, um, that would be helpful. But we go to this strawberry field and they've got, you know, like the one gallon buckets that you kind of pick strawberries in. I'll pick like you know, three quarters or more of the way up of the actual like really small green strawberries. And then I'll just layer on the top with the red ones because for some reason they don't like you picking the green ones. Um, and so I get away with it that way. But I age this Saison on, um, on green strawberries. And uh, so that brings, again, kind of a, it brings a tartness. It brings an extra tartness outside of that lactic acid. Um, 
but it also brings this like really cool, unique, earthy character to it. Um, there's there's something about it that you can't really describe that 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 kind of green, really tart, really acidic green strawberry brings to it. And then I put it on top of um, loose leaf Earl Grey tea. So I try to find a really good um, Earl Grey tea and let it sit on that for a very, very short period of time. So you get the acidity, you get kind of the earthy pop, um, and then you also get the really nice orangey citrus, uh, delicious notes that come with Earl Grey tea without anything being overpowering. So it's, it's relatively, it's, it's actually really easy drinking. It's really, really refreshing and it's become one of my, my favorites. And so I'd like to keep this going, but that green strawberry component of this thing is really tough. So again, if you've got any tips or tricks on where to get green strawberries, please, uh, please put it in the comments below. So that's what's up. You got a green strawberry Earl Grey tea, Saison. You've got a Scuppernog Muscadine Saison on tap right now. The color difference is pretty ridiculous. The grapes gave this one a little bit of a tint with the Muscadines, the red Muscadines. I adore how cloudy this one is. And the color is fantastic. It's so fun. And this has become a really uh, favorite combination over the last couple years. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to go into. I am pumped for the SJ Pour Challenge. That first round is starting to ramp up right now. I think people may even be starting to get their first round beers back from their hubs. I am watching uh, with uh, bated breath and so excited to be participating in the second round this year. Um, go check out the SJ Pour Challenge um, Facebook page or Instagram account. Um, it's they they did a cool thing Josh has uh, started today posting kind of like little mini profiles of all the past um, winners and like first second third if they placed in the US the last uh, several years um, so that's been kind of fun I, I appreciate that that's really cool um, so I'm excited for the second round of the SJ Poor challenge and I just got ingredients in the mail yesterday that I believe I'm doing two different beers and I'm gonna be deciding which one will be going into the challenge. And so that's gonna be uh, brewing up soon. So anyway guys, here's a, uh, a plug for single mash, 10 gallon brew day, and you can get two very, very different beers. Um, and that's really what like I said in my last video, what I've kind of trended towards is simplicity, efficiency, um, but still getting really cool, unique, and uh, delicious beers out of it. So um, I think that's it for me for now. 13 minutes, 13 and a half. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's not 20. So cheers, guys. I'll see you guys later. Check me out on, um, on Instagram at not on Sundays Brewing. And uh, along with some pictures of family and travel and all that kind of stuff, that's where I do all my, uh, my beer picture posting. So I hope you guys are doing great. Shout out to all you out there, and we'll see you in the SJ Poor Challenge. Hopefully I'll touch base before then. But if not, good luck to the first rounders, and I will see you in the second round. Let's go. Cheers.